1987 is when they first opened Buffalo Louis, appropriately enough, here on South Indiana Avenue. It's just as popular now as it was back then. Let's go figure out why. So we're here inside. I'm with my man, Ed. Ed's been running things since 09. Correct. All right, Ed, I need to know. The thing to have here is? Well, if you're at Buffalo Louis, there's only one thing to get. Wings and a burger. Sounds great. Uh, this is just called Burger Battle, so all we need is a burger. So what burger should I get? Like I said, wings and a burger. The burger's going to be uh, shroom and Swiss, and the wings will be 10 traditional little flats. I'll be right back. But I, we don't need... The key to a good burger, the key to good anything is fresh. Take fresh beef, fresh grilled onions, fresh shrooms, fresh bacon. Our 87 sauce, which is kind of like yum yum sauce, and it is definitely yum yum. Put on one of our fresh brioche buns, which is logoed, insert in a pile, and you're off to the race. All right, Mike, here she blows your shroom and Swiss burger Ooh, with buddy. a side of God's gift to the world. <laughs> Ten traditional sweet barbecue flats. The wings Am I gonna for join a burger you? battle. I'm joining you. Uh, I guess you're joining Let's go. Let's go. All right. Oh, oh, come on. I'm not a mushroom guy. I wouldn't have ordered this if you didn't make me. That's really good. I'm going to teach you something in your audience, how to shuck a wing. Grip, dip, and rip. Look at you! Look at you! What does Joey Chestnut have on you? Nothing! Nothing. So when you combine the fact that I hate mushrooms, legitimately, and yet this was excellent, and we didn't ask for wings, but they came along as well, we're gonna give our first five. Five Tom Allens is my grade for the Shroom and Swiss here at Buffalo. Back here in Bloomington, an hour away from kickoff between the Hoosiers and the Hilltoppers, which you can see right here on the Big Ten Network. And boy, oh boy, do we have something special for you right now. Lily King is a superstar swimmer, a two-time Big Ten Women's Athlete of the Year. She won two gold medals, a silver and a bronze at the Olympics. She swam in Tokyo, she swam in Rio. She is as dominant and as fun an athlete as you can find in our country, and we are thrilled to have this Hoosier great with us here on Tailgate. Lily, a couple of quick questions for you. Yes. Your freshman year in the 100 breaststroke, who won the NCAA championship? Me. What about your sophomore year? Me. Your junior year? Uh, me. And your senior year? Oh, yeah, that was me. What about all four years in the 200? OK, so that's eight events. You won eight national championships. My question is, why so selfish? <laughs> I you mean, know, there are other swimmers who would have been happy to have won. I don't think anybody else deserved it, so that's awesome. <laughs> Oh my God, I love that. Now, take me back to high school, maybe it was even before that. At what point in your career did you realize, okay, I'm not just a good swimmer, I can make some history here? Honestly, sounds so cheesy, but I won a state title when I was 12, and I walked into seventh grade two weeks later, and I was like, I am awesome. <laughs> <laughs> this is it, so yeah, pretty early on. <laughs> I talked with uh, your uh, old Indiana coach, Ray Luz, uh, earlier this week on the phone, and he was telling me he credits her with bringing intimidation to women's sports. Not just swimming, but in sports in general. So he gave me a couple stories, but I'm curious, what was your favorite time where you were like, I'm going to get in this swimmer's head, and it worked? Yeah, you know, honestly, probably the most evil I've ever been in the ready room was um, 2017 Worlds. It was kind of like my, Yulia? my rematch with Yulia. <laughs> oh, man, I was nasty. You know how in, like, the first couple Marvel movies, the Hulk can't control when he becomes Hulk? <laughs> I had a Hulk moment in the ready room, so it was super, super intense. But to be clear, what, what I was told a backwards electric slide around her? Now, Ray told me he prepped you with electric slide. I don't think he knows what the electric slide is, but it was more of like a backwards, like slow, chill walk. I, I was like staring it. at her, walking out. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I shot my towel into the basket, made it. It was great. Whatever it takes. Now, Lily, your mother was a collegiate swimmer. Yep. What? dynamic was that like growing up was she hands-on did she let you navigate everything yourself oh a little bit of both honestly so my mom did coach me she claimed she was never my coach but she did coach me a little bit um but it was nice to just have a parent who had been there and been in the world of elite sports and uh just kind of could show me the way now i was checking out the the team usa website so i'm not just pulling this out out of nothing or out of a newspaper from 10 years ago your pre-race meal is a mcdonald's double cheeseburger and a coke <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Could you do anything to make college kids love you more than that? <laughs> I know. I, I'm a big college kid at heart. Um, yeah, for a while, that was my pre-race meal routine. Um, I did that in Rio before I won the Olympics because <laughs> the food was inedible in the village. Um, so, yeah, that is true. That's true. That's From fantastic. college championships to international championships to Pan American championships to the Olympics, when you're in the water, does it all feel the same, or is there a different buzz when the, the stakes are higher? Oh, there's always a different buzz when the stakes are higher. You know, you're you're swimming in a, and the pool's always the same, but the crowd, it, it changes everywhere you go, and the more intense the crowd, the more intense the race, the better it is for me. I know how much you love female athletes of any variety. If there was one from the Big Ten, if you can think of one, that you'd like, I just really love to, maybe it was Nas Hillman, the basketball player at Michigan this past year. Maybe it's Caitlin Clark, who's exploding on the court. Maybe it's someone from 10, 20, 30 years ago that you'd like to have a conversation with. Who would it be? Oh, geez, I have no idea. Good, I put you <laughs> on the spot. <laughs> yeah, really put me on the spot Pressure, there. pressure. Uh, well, who should I say, guys? Say Lily King. Lily King. I'm going to say Lily King. <laughs> <laughs> so Paris is coming up, the Olympics in 2024. I'm told the Olympic trials will be at Lucas Oil Stadium in the state of Indiana. That is true. Trials will be at Lucas Oil Stadium. Now, yep. we're all excited for you. We hope you do great. But I was hoping we could do something to help you get ready. Okay, let's now, do it. Now, the breaststroke is obviously a full body thing, but mm. especially you need some help with the upper body. So oh, we have okay. a football okay. here. thank you. And we thought if everybody could help support her, the target is right, right. there. All right. It's very simple. If you would just, you know, just to help you, for the good of the country, yeah. to help build the upper right. body strength. Okay, no pressure here, everybody. All right. Yeah! Oh. I hit the face. I hit, I hit it. You it definitely hit through. the face. I didn't, it didn't go through, though. Now, here's That's the thing. Close enough. You won two gold medals, mm -hmm. which made America love you. But this moment right here is so special. You have to get a oh. new gold medal. Oh, thank I mean, you. this is. Is that going to fit my giant head? It's a moment. Oh, perfect. That will show the world how thank wonderful, you. arguably more <laughs> valuable <laughs> than the two golds she won in the Olympics. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the great Lily King. <laughs> Thank you, Lily. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Let's head back to Chicago. 2-0 start to the year, taking on Western Kentucky in just a little bit. We're going to shift gears and talk some hoops here. We are in basketball heaven, the state of Indiana, after all. Last year was a pretty darn good year for IU. 20-win season, made the NCAA tournament in the first year with Mike Woodson as the new head coach. And optimism is high right now because Trace Jackson Davis was an All-Big Ten performer. Race Thompson was an All-Big Ten performer. And both of these guys are here joining us now as they get ready for the upcoming basketball season. And I'm going to ask, I had a first question that I have to hold off because the wardrobe choices make me so happy. <laughs> We've got the tie-dye purple shorts on one. We've got the Tasmanian Devil on the other. Thank you very much for those. Of course, anytime, anytime. Always. <laughs> How often do you guys get to go to football games in a fall? Oh, uh, I go to most of them. I try to support the guys, get out there, scream a little bit. Yeah, we try to go to as many as we can. It's a lot of fun to support the other team. Now, Trace, Mike Woodson played a heck of a lot of games in the NBA, coached a bunch of games in the NBA. How has his insight helped you guys? Um, just being able to... Just being able to uh, uh, <laughs> try, try, try your best to block them <laughs> yeah, out. <laughs> yeah, I got you. But being able to just have him, have him be coming to the school, yeah. and then coming back, and then just his MB, his MB. Uh, you go, go ahead. Uh, I just cut it. I'm not working either. No, you're fine. Uh, keep talking. What you mean? You just stopped. No, my mic's cutting. My mic's cutting. It's okay, off. bud. We can hear you. Keep oh, going. you can hear me. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but being able to. Um, him being at the school and then coming back yeah. and then his NBA experience of 34 years has just really helped us a lot. So. so we all know that the NBA has been interested in Trace for a while. They were sniffing hard this past year. When you found out he was coming back, what was your first reaction? When Trace was coming back? Yeah. Uh, I was excited. I mean, I said I was coming back before he did. So when I knew he was coming back, uh, I knew we had something big coming for this year. So we got a lot of guys coming in, and we got an exciting season coming up. So he just did it because you were coming back. I yeah, mean, I you think set so. the path. I, I think I set it up. But. Yeah. <laughs> now, were you like teasing him at all? We were like, I don't know, Race. Should I come back? Should I, I mean, go? <laughs> Maybe I won't. There was a little tease going on, but it wasn't. It wasn't nothing crazy. Just made the best decision for myself. But having guys like this coming back too makes it worthwhile. 
Grace, your father is a Minnesota Gopher legend. Every running back record you could imagine. Now, basketball is very different, but growing up, how did he keep you in the loop, motivate you, and tell you what the college experience is like? Uh, I mean, he just told me what it was like exactly. Uh, told you what you had to do to get to the level that you want to get at and pushed me day in, day out to be the player that I've become, and I can't thank him enough for that. Trace, when do you remember the first time you heard someone call you TJD? First time I was called TJD was probably my junior year of high school. I think it was written in an article. My high school coach called me it all the time, but like out in the old public, it was probably junior year of high school. How do we feel about that? I feel like we can get a more creative nickname than just using <laughs> your initials. Yeah. I mean, you probably could, but TJD sticks, so, and people like it, so. By the way, is. where does your first name? I've never met anyone named Race before. What's the story behind it? My parents told me it was in a baby book, but <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 that's all I know. <laughs> they just liked it. <laughs> just liked it. Makes sense to me. Um, uh, you, you got a, a really exciting year coming forward. Give me some early thoughts on these freshmen that you guys have brought in. Uh, really exciting freshmen. Score the ball, play defense, athletic. Uh, able to get up and down and already strong enough to play in the Big Ten. So it's exciting to see them holding their own in practice and really doing their thing, putting the extra work in and just get helping the team out. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're going to be a big help. Um, they came in. They came in with a pro mindset. They're ready to get to go and get working. So it's going to be a fun year, and they're going to be a big part of it. And you guys are now leaders of a team. I feel like yesterday we had these exciting freshmen coming in, and now you get to look at the freshmen and motivate them. How have you seen changes in yourselves as now becoming the leaders that you used to look up to? Uh, I mean, I had people do it for me. So, I mean, it was like just like a rope being just held down, passing the torch. So I feel like now me and Trace are kind of holding the torch, and hopefully next year we can pass it down to somebody else, and they'll keep continue the culture and change the culture around here. I don't know if you guys are aware, but these people don't like Purdue very much. <laughs> <laughs> and shocker, I have to think last year when you guys beat Purdue, when they were number four in the country, that was the highlight of the season. What was the best part of that game? Um, for me, it was just being able to watch my teammates. Um, I was kind of hurt a little bit and in foul trouble. So being on the sideline, just cheering them on and watching how some of them perform, like Rob hitting that shot, big game from race, and then just other players just stepping up when they needed them to. Yeah, that was definitely a fun game. I mean, the whole game was fun. Uh, hopefully we can get two of them this year. So <laughs> there you go. That's the goal. Hey, before we let you go, you guys haven't graduated yet, so you're not quite a famous alum. But when you do graduate, you will be. We want to quiz you guys. I want you to turn over here. The fans are going to hold up five different <laughs> signs. We're going to see if you can tell us who these famous Indiana alums are. Let's hold up sign number one right Mark, over here. Mark Cuban. Mark there we go. Here we go. One down. Max right. owner, famous billionaire. Very good. And sign number two. <laughs> help him. Hey, help give him. me some help. Hey, Anthony, Antoine. <laughs> Randall L. Antoine, Antoine Randall L. There you go. There you go. He's a superstar <laughs> quarterback here. Now our coach of the Detroit yeah. Lions. Let's get number three. Come on, parents. He's an actor. Parents. <laughs> he is an actor. I know, Louder. I know he's an actor. Kevin Klein. There we Kevin go. Kevin Klein. Oh, in so and out. Fish called Wanda. <laughs> All right, number four. Back to the athlete. Victor Lodipo. <laughs> yeah, I got that one. <laughs> I got that one. Let's see if they're as enthusiastic for this fifth one. <laughs> the women over here know Luke, it. Matt. <laughs> Trace is giving me the most. I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. He's Mike the guy Woodson. from The Bachelor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who that is. I don't watch that show. <laughs> Great job. <laughs> to be honest, if you guys did get that, Brock was going to grab the <laughs> I was yeah, praying that you guys would know it. I really was. <laughs> Not bad. Ladies and gentlemen, Trace and Race. <laughs> guys, thanks for the time. We appreciate it. Best of luck this year. Thank you. Their season starts, Dave, in 51 days. I'm here with the Mullen brothers, Taiwan and Travel. We're going to play a game called Mullen It Over. I'm going to say a category, and these guys are going to tell me by holding up the sign who they think it is. You guys ready? Ready. All right, let's start with this. Which Mullen brother is older? Come on now. I was born way before him. Okay. <laughs> that was a test. That, if, if we had any confusion there, then we we're going to go back and that start was, all over. That was low. Okay. Okay, good. Which one is smarter? Me. I was 3.0 in college. What do you have? I had a 4.0 in high school. I had these six. Oh, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the better rapper? Agreement. Trivia. Prove it. You got the bars. 
I'm finna sing. I'm, this how you gonna know I'm a ladies man. Okay. All right. I said, look. Baby, let's keep it pushing. Don't wanna never end. See your flight to Indiana, show you around Bloomington. <laughs> I had to make you my wife if I wasn't feeling friends. I'm down to take a loss with you, but we gonna try to win. <laughs> Look, I ain't even gonna give you too much. Y'all might, y'all might, y'all might, y'all might. Keep wanting more. Keep wanting more. Very nice. You got it, boy. You got it. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Do the ladies like more? Oh, yeah. 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 Do the ladies like more? Oh, come on. Me. Come, come on. Nah. Very handsome. Come on, now. Nah. They, they my, love my, me. My hair just messed up right now, but. Love. Here's a big one. Mom's favorite. The, oh, combo, and you and him? I think he's a baby boy, so you know how moms feel about the last child leaving for college. Yeah, you know, she by herself in the house now, so she. I think she cried a little more when he left the house because she, she in the house by herself, so. Right. I yeah, give it to I was with her for a little minute before I could prepare. So I give it to Chabelle. But she loved me too now. Nah. Don't get that wrong. Oh now. yeah. <laughs> don't get that don't get that wrong now. Nah. Obviously. You gotta put you in there. Yeah, gotta put me in there. I'm low-key a moon boy. Though. You wanna give mom a message before we go? What's up, mom? We miss you, we love you. I love you. <laughs> yeah, because you're the favorite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. To Molinero, Joey Molinero, you know him as the superstar on social media, one of the funniest guys around, a guy who does a rare thing which takes sports and finds the humor in them. It is great to have you with us, man. Dude, this is a dream. I've always wanted to be on a college football tailgate show with fans <laughs> in the back. <laughs> this is incredible. And you are from the state of Indiana. I am. We were talking earlier this week. You like have memories growing up of your family members being like, it's IU ball time. Yeah, pretty much everyone I grew up with, it was like when you're at the dinner table, there's a picture of Jesus, and then there's a picture of Bob Knight. <laughs> and that's kind of how it went, you know? It's just what you grew up with, it was a religion. What were your favorite sports growing up? Because uh, impressions aside, you understand what it's like in a locker room. You understand what, what a head coach's press conference is like. What is your personal sports background? Yeah, I'm a little scarred from travel baseball back in the day, <laughs> you know. But, uh, but I turned the trauma into comedy, right? So it worked out, right? So I played baseball a lot, uh, you know, basketball, football in high school and everything. But, yeah, man, it was my life. And I said, hey, I can't make it out there with those guys, so why not make fun of it? <laughs> <laughs> Which impression do you remember being the first one that kind of got a lot of traction? Andrew Luck. Yeah. And then he decided to retire. <laughs> Perfect timing. So then I had to transition. We call that a pivot or a transition uh -huh. in the TV biz, right? Sure. And then I uh, pivoted to Saban, and that's worked out. But, yeah, Luck, <laughs> that was the first one uh, that really took off. And then he's uh, doing his thing now, so all what, good. What percentage of people that you've done an impression of are like, not funny. <laughs> Not funny. Probably a lot of people online. Um, <laughs> I don't really, I, you know, I've been lucky. A lot of people that I've met, they're really cool with it. Although I did meet Nick Saban, and he couldn't have cared less. <laughs> so it was pretty on brand. I, I really enjoyed that, because if he would have been friendly, I'd have been like, oh, that's not you. I can't right? do it. What I'm yeah. doing is inaccurate now. Exactly, yeah. So that didn't go over as well as I thought it would, but at the end of the day, I was happy with it. Joe, you seem like a great guy. You were taking your comedy, making the world laugh, but we need to see the evil side. How have you used these impressions for evil? I'm assuming a lot of prank calls growing up. <laughs> <laughs> Not prank calls as much. Uh, mostly just use it on family members. You know, my grandpa, my dad, my my father-in-law, everybody like that. They kind of know whenever they're around, there's material happening, and I'm taking from them. What feels harder to you, doing a sports impression, uh, a sports segment, or doing something like, like you had this video this past week about just dancing and how different dances exist when Get Low comes on. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> love Get Low at a wedding, right? Fall wedding's going on right now on a Saturday. You're getting low, you're dropping to the floor. Um, you know, it's, there's a different challenge with each of them, but you know, it's just it's what I love, man. It's, it's tattooed on my arm, it's the clown's prayer. That's what it's all about, just really? making people laugh and bringing some joy. Wait, tell us more about that. Yeah, so it's uh, Chris Farley, his documentary, yeah. The Clown's Prayer. It's kind of what he lived by. So right there it says, and in my final moment when I hear you whisper, no, wait, I messed it up. <laughs> and in my final moment, may I hear you whisper, when you made my people smile, you made me smile. That's great, beautiful. Man. Yeah, so that's, that's what it's great. all about. Yeah. Well, listen, before we let you go, sure. I have to abuse your skill set here. Of course. <laughs> um, I'd like to talk to a few of the friends in the sports world. And, right. you know, there's a big topic of conversation in the sports world about expansion. USC and UCLA come into the Big Ten. I'm just curious. Let's start with Fox's Gus Johnson. Gus, what are your thoughts on conference expansion? Oh, wow! <laughs> you have expansion and you didn't invite me! Hunt <laughs> my feelings! <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Gus, the, uh, the guy whose game you called last week, Nick Saban at Alabama, you had that Alabama-Texas game. Now, I heard a rumor <laughs> that, that, Nick, you tried to get Alabama into the Big Ten, but the Big Ten said the word is pronounced program, and you said forget it. Well, I've had good success playing <laughs> against the Big Ten, all right? So I come up here, I'll beat you all by 50, 60. I don't know. It's not my fault. As soon as I heard that I couldn't say program, I said, <laughs> I'm going to keep running my program the way I want to run my program. <laughs> well, hang on a second. I understand NBC's Chris Collinsworth wants to chime in right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Conference expansion. Who, who want to get excited about that? Maybe even Notre Dame comes down if they could beat Marshall. I certainly know the Hoosiers <laughs> wouldn't beat Mar would beat Marshall, that's for sure. But... <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. There is no question. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, is that Gus trying to chime in once more? Gus? What is Gus saying? I don't know. I'm running out of <laughs> Gus. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah, <laughs> just, oh, wow, Joel, cut! <laughs> <laughs> now, I understand Owen Wilson wants to chime in. Owen, you're not even a football guy. Oh, I don't even know what's going on. <laughs> Conference expansion? What conference are we talking about? We getting superheroes together? I don't know, but it's great. All right, final one. <laughs> Colin Cowherd, another Fox personality. Ah, this is the head. But Yoshi, Yoshi, divorcing from the Pac-12? That's uh, a good divorce. Trust me, I've been divorced. I know all about it. That's a good divorce. Bring it over to the Big Ten. How great is Joey Mullen? Hey! Come oh! on, everybody. That was a treat, man. Hey, thanks so much, Joey. Thank, Thank you. That was a dream, man. Thank Incredible, you so much. Man. Joey Molinaro. There we go. Awesome. Woo! Football is starting in just a handful of minutes. Look at the scene in 